I can't think of Jeff Minter without the word legend in my head. He's been around the industry for many years and still makes artful games that have influenced a great number of people. I always found Jeff and his games fascinating because, you know, Jeff was so distinct and it's just, like, just so unlike anyone else. And it's one of the true, like, originals, one of the true iconoclasts in gaming. Like, there's no one else like him. Like, if Jeff didn't exist, you'd have to invent him, right? Because someone has to, someone has to be that guy. There aren't enough people like Jeff. He is in his things. What, it, what he makes is him. What, what makes Jeff stand out, and, and, and what for me was the whole point of, of um, the artistry when I was younger, was this notion that it's, it's, a, it's you in the thing. It is an extension of you. It is a part of you. It is a part of your character, your personality. What he's making is stuff he makes out of love, and that's always been present in everything that he does. I think that's just one of the things that makes the games lovely, that makes the, the games are so integral to Jeff, and Jeff is so integral to the games. Obviously, I was a big fan of Jeff from the 80s. Uh, I think he was one of the main reasons I got to Commodore 64 after having a Spectrum. After seeing, I think, Sheep in Space and Revenge of the Mutant Camels, I thought, oh, hello, this is interesting. It was this lifestyle, cultural choice that he'd made, which was so different to everyone else. Everyone else was just a company or a product, and Jeff was Jeff. He was in magazines talking about his life. He was talking about what interests him, what was different about the way he approached it. He was engaging with people directly, and Jeff was passionate about the art of making games, being himself, and if people like to pay him money to do that, fantastic. The way he dressed, he looked a bit rock starish and, and hippie-ish as well. He had long hair and a beard and he Best bit like a hippie, I suppose, um, which I could relate to because in the 70s I grew my hair long. Well, well, we weren't called, well, we were known as hairies then. They always had those Peruvian jumpers and the, you know, the animals in there. Oh, yeah. And the long hair and the, oh, yeah, here he is. Here's the hippie. <laughs> he had like an Afghan coat, you know, sheepskin on the outside and the, the fluff down the front. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. Very different from the other programmers that we met at those times. Very, very different. It's somewhere between being very rock star and not rock star at all. I can't quite decide <laughs> because he will just dress how he likes and, and, and talk, speak his mind and he's very lovely and very open to speaking with everyone. And it, it is very interesting to see someone who's never really fallen into the trap of wanting to conform to what the industry thinks anyone should be. Jeff's always just made peace, I think, with living in the sideline. He's never given up on game design as a discipline, as a, as a vocation. It's all very much work, but it is like, you know, this, this kind of peaceful kind of compromise between like, this is going to be the work, but I'm only going to agree to do this amount of work for something that I really love. I've been lucky that I was so far in my career I've always managed to work on stuff that I want to do and I guess I just stubbornly want to carry on doing that really I don't want to sort of compromise that in order to potentially make more money or whatever I'd say I'm definitely off mainstream. I have kind of a tangential connection to the traditional game dev scene, I think. I, I want to enjoy what I do. I want to feel happy with the things that I've made and I want to make things that I want to play with.